In this part, we'll be playing with the auto cycle. What is the auto cycle? The auto cycle is the ideal cycle for gasoline and tenon combustion engines. Internal combustion engines. What does it mean? If you are in the street and you see a, a car actually and let's say gasoline internal combustion engine the maximal performance of that specific car is the one predicted by the auto cycle running under the same conditions okay so the real efficiency will be definitely lower than the one predicted by auto and auto will be lower than carno and carno lower than 100 percent okay the first thing we'll have to understand is what is an internal combustion engine and also we will see all the processes to design an auto cycle. A car engine generates power from the expansion of compressed air in a contained cylinder with the help of fuel. That is why it's called as an internal combustion engine. Before getting into the working, let's see the main parts involved in the working of an engine. First, the crankshaft. This is the part which converts the linear motion of the piston, to a rotational force. Next, the pistons and the piston rods. The pistons will be pushed down by the expansion of compressed air, and turns the crankshaft. And the valves which controls the flow of air and fuel into the cylinders. These valves are driven by the intake camshaft, and the exhaust camshaft, and the camshafts, are driven by the crank itself, using a timing belt. There will be idle pulleys, and a tensioner pulley, to hold the belt tight in place. This here, is the internal structure, of a four-stroke, inline four-cylinder. DOHC engine, which is commonly found in most hatchback and sedan cars. A four-stroke engine should pass through four different strokes, to complete one cycle to produce power. They are intake, compression, power, and exhaust stroke. The crank to camshaft ratio is 2 is to 1. Which means it will take two crank revolutions, to complete one camshaft revolution and the camshafts are designed in a responsive manner, to open or close based on the corresponding strokes, of each cylinder. Let's take a look at a single cylinder, and see how a four-stroke engine works in detail. In order to ignite the air-fuel mixture, a spark plug is used. This will ignite the compressed air-fuel mixture, with the help of an electrical spark. We will take it down by each stroke. The intake stroke. The inlet valve opens and the downward movement of the piston creates a suction. This pulls the air-fuel mixture into the cylinder. Once the air-fuel mixture is in the cylinder, compression stroke begins compressing the mixture. At this time both inlet and outlet valves stays closed. At the end of compression stroke, the air-fuel mixture is ignited by the spark plug. The explosion exerts pressure and pushes the piston down. This is the power stroke which produces power, to the crank. At the exhaust stroke, the outlet valves opens and the piston pushes out the burned gas. The cycle starts again from intake stroke, keeping the engine running and produces power. For a carburetor engine, the air and fuel are mixed inside the carburetor assembly, and fed to the cylinders. In the case of a fuel-injected engine, the fuel is injected into the intake manifold, or directly into the cylinders. Since only a power stroke produces power, you may wonder how the engine turns continuously. Well, the answer is in the crank itself. The flywheel and the crank counterweights provides momentum, which keeps the crankshaft from stopping immediately. For a four-cylinder engine, Considering any time instance, one cylinder is always in power stroke, which produces more power and less vibrations comparing to a single cylinder engine. And that is how a car engine produces power in simple. Thanks for watching.
and stay tuned for more presentations from Autotech Labs. Let us read the problem first. So what do we have? We have the compression ratio, which is V1 over V2, in an air standard auto cycle is 8. At the beginning of the compression stroke, the pressure is 0.1 megapascal and the temperature is 15 degrees C. The heat transfer to the air per cycle is 1,800 kilojoules per kilograms of air. So this is our Qm. What we have to do, we have to determine the pressure and the temperature at each point in the cycle. We can also add the specific volume if we want. And also we have to get the thermal efficiency of this auto cycle. So, what do we know in this problem? We know that we are dealing with an auto cycle, okay? An auto cycle means that all our processes will be ideal. Okay, what do we have? We have work addition here in a compressor, and we know that the work addition, the ideal process, is isentropic, okay? Isentropic, this means that we're allowed to use the isentropic relations here. The expansion, it's work out, it's isentropic. Now, specifically for an auto cycle, the heat addition is at constant specific volume. So it's Qn, and this is at V is equal constant. What does it mean? This means that the piston is at the, the highest level, the top dead center, and when we provide heat, when you have, if you want, the combustion or the fake combustion, because here we don't have combustion, we are providing heat from an external source, so the piston stays in place. It doesn't move down, okay? So the heat addition is at constant specific volume. The same thing here, when we are rejecting heat, our Q out, what do we have? We have V is equal constant. So heat rejection at constant specific volume. So for an auto cycle, we have four processes. Two of them are isentropic, the compression and the expansion, and two are isochoric, heat addition and heat rejection, okay? What characterizes the most an internal combustion engine is the compression ratio. What is a compression ratio? We'll call it R, and it's equal to the ratio between V1 over V2. So basically the, the volume, or here the specific volume, this is a closed system, so the mass remains the same inside, between when the piston is at the bottom dead center, divided by the volume, or here the specific volume, when the piston is at the top dead center. What do we know? We know that this compression ratio is equal to eight in this case, we know also the conditions at the inlet, state one. We know that P1 is equal to 0 0.1 megapascal. And we know that T1 is equal to 15 degrees C, or 288 Kelvin. The other things that we know, we know that heat addition per cycle, this is heat addition, so Qn, is equal to 1,800 kilojoules per kilograms of air. So for each kilogram of air inside our antenna combustion engine, we are providing 1,800 kilojoules, okay? So we are asked to get the temperature, the pressure, and uh, if we want the specific volume at state one. At state two, at state three, and the last one at state four. Let's get started with the first one, state one, which is the easiest one. So state one. What do we know? We are already given T1 is equal to 288 Kelvin and P1 is equal to 0 0.1 megapascal. 
to get V1, this is easy. We're dealing with air here, okay? It's an ideal cycle, so we don't consider combustion uh, gases or whatever. We just assume air is following all the processes here. And it's an ideal gas, so we can write P1, V1 is equal to RT1, or V1 is equal to the gas constant T1 over P1. And this will give us 0 0.827 cubic meters per kilograms. Can move on to state two. So for state two, we don't know much, right? Uh, we don't know the pressure, we don't know the temperature. The only thing that we know is that the process between one and two is isentropic, okay? And this is a lot, because by knowing it's isentropic, I can use this, okay? And interestingly enough, one value, an important value and characteristic of the auto cycle that is given is our compression ratio. And the compression ratio is eight and it's equal V1 over V2. And you see that this V1 over V2 appears here so this gives me access to T2, and it also appears here. So it gives me access to P2, okay? So if I use them, and again, I'm allowed to use this because it's isentropic. I cannot use this, for example, between three and two because it's isochoric here, okay? So what do we have? We have T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over V2, exponent k minus 1 with our v1 over v2 is equal to r okay our compression ratio exponent k minus 1 okay and it's equal to what it's equal to 8 which is our compression ratio 1.4 minus 1 and now we just have to calculate T2 is equal to T1 multiplied by this, and this will give us T2 is equal to, okay, it's compression, T2 has to be higher than T1, okay? And we find T2, 662 Kelvin, okay, which is fine. Now for P2, the same thing, P2 over P1 is equal to what? We can use this isentropic relation, V1 over V2 exponent K. What is V1 over V2? This is our compression ratio R exponent K. It's equal to 8 exponent 1.4. And from here, knowing P1, which is 0 0.1 megapascal, we can get our P2 is equal to 1.838 megapascal. Does it make sense? Yes, because we are compressing, so therefore the pressure increases significantly compared to our uh, pressure at P1, okay? Now, state three. What do we know about state three? Okay, we don't know much again, except that V3 is equal to V2. This is known, okay? Because we know that for an auto cycle, the ideal process is heat addition at constant specific volume. So it's isochoric. The piston doesn't move down when you are adding heat. And what does it mean for a closed system? It means that the heat in is only used to increase the internal energy of the system. Nothing is going into work, okay? So we maximize the increase in internal energy, and then we have work out here between three and four during the expansion process. So we know that V3 is equal to V2, and it's equal to, oh, we haven't calculated V2. Well, this is easy, because V2, knowing the compression ratio, so V2 
is equal to V1 over 8 over the compression ratio, okay? And this will give us 0 0.1034 cubic meters per kilograms. So this one will be equal to 0 0.1034 cubic meters per kilograms, okay? So now we have to get P3 and T3. What do we know? We know that Qn is equal to 1,800 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, this is important because we will use it. Okay, we know the heat, and if we apply the first law of thermodynamics, we can get the variation in internal energy. Since this is a closed system, so therefore delta U will be equal to CV delta T. So you see, auto cycle will involve CV. Brighton cycle will be in, so will be invo will involve CP. Okay, and QN is equal to what? It's a closed system. Okay, uh, we can assume steady state and. There is no work involved here. So therefore, Qn will be directly equal to the change in energy in our, inter in our closed system. If we neglect the variation in kinetic energy and potential energy, we are left with the variation in internal energy. Okay? So it will be equal to U minus U. But Qn has to be positive, right? Which one has the highest internal energy, three or two? You see we're adding heat, so the internal energy here will rise, and U3 is higher than U2. So therefore, we can write U3 minus U2. Are we using uh, air in the system? Yes, it's an ideal cycle. Is air an, an ideal gas? Yes, it is. So therefore, we can replace the variation in internal energy by CV delta T, or by the integral of CV delta T, we assume CV as constant, and then we can write CV T3 minus T2. Why we are doing this? Remember, we are trying to get T at state three. So now we can write, so T3 is equal to what? Is equal to T2 plus Qn that is given over Cv, okay? We just calculated T2, 662 Kelvin. Qn is equal 1,800 kilojoules per kilograms, and Cv is given, okay? And this will give us 3,174 Kelvin, okay? What's left? We have to get P3. Now to get P3, we have actually different options. And one of them is to say that V is constant, right, between 3 and 2. So V3 is equal to V2. This implies that it's an ideal gas. V is equal RT over P. So R T3 over P3 is equal to R T2 over P2, okay? R and R cancel out. What do we know here? We just calculated T3. We know calculated T2. We calculated P2. So this gives us that P3 is equal to what? Is equal to T3 cross P2 over T2. And this will give us 8.813 megapascal. And this will be the highest pressure. And at the same time, it will be the highest temperature in our cycle, okay? So now what's left is to get T4, P4, and V4. So we have to get the condition as state four. What do we know about state four? Well, the first thing we know is that V4 is equal to V1 because in an auto cycle, the heat rejection 
is at constant specific volume, okay? So V4 is equal to V1, and we found V1 as 0 0.827 cubic cubic meters per kilograms, okay? Now to get T4 and P4, we have to ask ourselves the following question. What's the process between 3 and 4? It's isentropic, so I can use isentropic relations, okay? So, and we will be using the ones with the ratio between the specific volumes because this is a characteristic of uh, our uh, auto cycle because here you can write also the compression ratio as v1 we said is equal to v4 and v2 is equal to v3 okay so we can use them and we are given the compression ratio which is something that we can use so we can write that t3 over t4 is equal to what? Is equal to V4 over V3 exponent K minus one, okay? And V4 over V3 is what? Is our compression ratio, R K minus one, okay? And it's equal to eight, 1.4 minus one, and this will give us directly that T4 is equal to what? Is equal to 1,380 Kelvin. Is it lower than T3? Yes, it is. T3 was equal to 3,174 Kelvin. So it makes sense. For the pressure, we'll be using this one. So P3 over P4 is equal to what? Is equal to V4 over V3 exponent K and V4 over V3 again is the compression ratio R exponent K it's equal to 8 exponent K and from this we can get P4 is equal to 0 0.480 megapascal Okay, we are almost done. So we have all our properties here. T in terms of temperature, pressure, specific volume. What we have to get now is the thermal efficiency. Computation of the thermal efficiency, okay? What do we know? It's a power cycle. So we know that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work net over Qn. So here we have two options. The first one is that we calculate the work net. So what does it mean? We calculate the work here during the expansion process. We calculate the work during the compression. We subtract them, and then we get the work net. Or we bypass this. If we are not interested in getting the work net, we can write that the work net is a closed system, okay? And it's a cycle, so it's equal to what? It's equal to Q in minus Q out over Q in. And this is equal to one minus Q out over Q in, right? We know Q in, Q in is 1,800 kilojoules per kilograms. So we just have to calculate Q out with Q out is equal to what? Again, here we have a Q out. It's a closed system, okay? So therefore, uh, we will have the variation in, in energy and work. Work is equal to zero because this is the heat exchanger and it doesn't produce work or doesn't, and doesn't need work. So therefore, Q will be equal to the variation in energy. If we neglect the variation in kinetic energy and potential energy compared to the variation in internal energy. Remember, this is a closed system, so the internal energy and not enthalpy. So therefore, we'll end up with U minus U. Q out has to be negative, 
So basically, it's the smallest internal energy minus the highest. You see that here our temperature was quite high compared to the 288. So U4 is higher than U1. Since U4 is higher than U1 and we want it to be negative, so it's U1 minus U4. Okay? And we are using air, an ideal cycle. So we can write CV, we assume CV constant at room temperature T4. And this will give us a QN is equal to minus 782.3 kilojoules per kilograms. Okay? So now I just have to replace. So the thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus Q out over Q in, and it's equal to 1 minus, here we have to take the absolute value, okay, because it's the minus is already here, 782.3 over, we are given Q in, 1,800. And this will give us 0. 56.5 or 56.5 percent so this is the maximal efficiency thermal efficiency for any gasoline internal combustion engine running following the conditions that we stated here right with this temperature and pressure at the inlet and this QN and this compression ratio, okay? No cycle, internal combustion engine, will exceed this efficiency if all the numbers here are the same, okay? And again, this efficiency is lower than Carnot, which is lower than 100%. Now, interestingly enough, when you look at this efficiency predicted by an ideal cycle, auto cycle, is quite high. 56.5% is quite high. Remember that this is the thermal efficiency, okay? And it's ideal case. In real life, the efficiency, the overall efficiency of uh, an internal combustion engine in a car is around 20%, okay? Because first, it's not ideal. And second thing is that we have other irreversibilities, okay? So friction and the mechanical losses and things like this. So therefore, we add to, we multiply the efficiency that we're getting here, the thermal efficiency, by other efficiencies, okay, that will reduce the overall efficiency of our car, okay? But from a thermodynamical point of view, no cycle actually, no antenna combustion engine with the same condition will exceed this value. Again, if running under the same conditions, right, if we change the conditions here, our thermal efficiency will change, okay?